welcome to The Late Show, everybody. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Right now... Right now, uh, down in Congress, everyone is at each other's throats because it is Tuesday. Also, <laughs> also because of the border. Now, no matter what your views are on immigration, there's no denying there's been a border crisis for decades. And recently, it's gotten even more serious. In December, border crossings through Mexico reached nearly 10,000 migrants per day. That number's risen more than fourfold compared to the 2010s. And then again, who can blame migrants for wanting to come here for a better life? I mean, they know our motto, E Pluribus Unum, which of course <laughs> translates as, we put cheese in the crust. <laughs> Ever since Biden took office, Republicans have been pushing him hard to get tougher on the border. And recently, they've resorted to some extreme measures like holding Ukraine aid hostage over the building of a new border wall. It's a plan put forth by chief GOP strategist Chatimir Dutton. He's <laughs> a good guy. He's a good guy. And this legislative hostage taking seemed to work because at the end of last year, Biden saw the writing on the wall, accepted their conditions, and the Senate got to work on a big bill spearheaded on the GOP side by Oklahoma Senator and Bangs! <laughs> James Lankford. To be fair, that's a 14-year-old photo. He doesn't look like that anymore, <laughs> and we won't use it again. Lankford buckled down. He negotiated hard with the Democrats, and he got a deal. Republicans thanked him by backing out. That is so crazy. Republicans are the ones who insisted on a border deal above everything else, and now they're backing out. Are they lawmakers, or are they five-year-olds at dinner time? What do you mean you don't want buttered noodles? You cried all afternoon about how you wanted buttered noodles, so I made buttered noodles. You can't suddenly want ego waffles and to deport Guatemalans without due process. <laughs> Eat your noodles. <laughs> so, why did Republicans do this? The same reason they do anything. As Mitch McConnell explained, the issue is that the nominee, <laughs> Trump, wants to campaign on immigration. You can't take away immigration, Mitch. That's my best stuff, okay? <laughs> Look, no, listen, folks. You take away immigration, all I can talk about is how low-flow toilets are giving windmill cancer to whales. <laughs> well, <laughs> now, now that Trump has scuttled the deal and is saying, blame it on me, scuttled the deal, Republicans had to find someone to blame, and they picked Bangs! <laughs> Sorry, we really tried not to use it again, but... <laughs> Come on. Because <laughs> over the weekend, the Oklahoma Republican Party approved a resolution condemning and censuring James Lankford for his role in the ongoing bipartisan border negotiations. He did what they asked, and then he got spanked for it. You can read all about it in the erotic thriller, Fifty Shades of Bangs. <laughs> now, to be fair, we made that graphic before I promised not to do that again. <laughs> And I'm being told that we made the graphic because I promised not to do that again. <laughs> now, right now, uh, that border bill, it's kind of important because, and I don't want to alarm anyone, we're on the cusp of another civil war. <laughs> Here's what's going on. Texas, they had their own plan to deal with the border put in place by Texas Governor Greg Abbott, seen here releasing a flock of doves to poop on migrant children. <laughs> Abbott introduced an anti-immigration uh, crackdown, putting razor wire along 60 miles of the border. But the federal government didn't like the razor wire, saying it physically prevented Border Patrol agents from entering the area, processing migrants, and providing assistance to drowning victims, which is why Border Patrol had been cutting the razor wire to reach them. As a general rule, you want to be able to help people who are drowning or really in any mortal danger, not make things worse. That's why the fire safety signs don't say, stop, drop, and stab. <laughs> now, once, uh, once the feds came in and started cutting the wire, Abbott sued, but he also doubled down, installing razor wire under the surface of the Rio Grande and circular saw blades between the buoys. Next, he's gonna change the poem on the Statue of Liberty from, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, to, would you like to play a game? 
The razor wire case uh, went all the way to the Supreme Court, who ruled against Texas in a 5-4 decision with no details or explanations provided. The dissents simply read, nay, 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 and does this luxury RV come in mother of pearl? <laughs> now, this really should have been a clear 9-0 decision against Texas, because the federal government has the final say on all immigration. It's in the Constitution. It's called the Supremacy Clause. And it clearly states that federal law and federal treaty obligations, quote, shall be the supreme law of the land. Now, for those of you who didn't go to law school, supreme law means it comes with sour cream. <laughs> but, unanimous or not, SCOTUS has spoken. It has been decided, right? Wrong. Because Greg Abbott is plowing ahead. After the ruling, the Texas National Guard ignored the Supreme Court decision, and Abbott continued construction along the border, claiming that he doesn't have to listen to the Supreme Court because the Biden administration had, quote, broken the compact between the United States and the states, a reference to an archaic idea called the compact theory and nullification. That theory states that states can ignore any federal laws they choose. It was used to justify secession by the Confederacy. It was originally championed in the 1830s by vice president, notorious racist, and guy who just got spun around in the barber chair and does not like what he sees. <laughs> John C. Calhoun. Calhoun opposed a tariff back then designed to help northern manufacturers, and he convinced his home state of South Carolina to pass a law nullifying the tariff in their state. Well, that did not please President and Pantene American Andrew Jackson. <laughs> President Jackson, Jackson threatened to invade South Carolina, so Calhoun backed down, and the state repealed the Nullification Act. But Jackson never forgave his vice president. When asked about his time in office, Jackson replied, I regret I was unable to hang John C. Calhoun. <laughs> hang his vice president? So Trump has no original ideas. <laughs> now, now, we're cooking along here. We're, we're humming. We are no stops. <laughs> now, now, Abbott says that nullification applies here because the rush of migrants at the border constitutes an invasion. But that argument was struck down in 1800 by James Madison, who, it is worth remembering, wrote the <laughs> Constitution. He said, quote, invasion is an operation of war, and the removal of alien friends has appeared to be no incident to a general state of war. What he's saying is that this is an invasion because we're not at war with Mexico or anyone else. These migrants fall under the category of alien friends, alongside Mork, <laughs> E.T., Stitch, and Tilda Swinton. <laughs> now, talking here. How much time do I have left? What time is it? Can I keep going? Okay. Now, some MAGA citizens out there are taking things into their own hands, including a group of QAnon world influencers and anti-vaxxers who have organized a Take Our Border Back convoy headed to Texas. Organizers said they were expecting 700,000 participants. But as of yesterday afternoon, the convoy was just a few dozen, <laughs> predominantly men over the age of 60. So <laughs> it's less a convoy and more a Denny's at 10 a.m. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good, actually. I'm very close. Here's a, here's a picture of the caravan, which calls itself God's Army. <laughs> wow. Does God need more funding? Because it doesn't look like God's Army could take on the Salvation Army. <laughs> but I, for one, uh, certainly hope that this all stays peaceful, because this is the way to start a civil war. Not with a whimper but with bangs. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Emma Stone and DNC chair Jamie Harrison. But when we come back, meanwhile, join us, won't you?